Hello everybody and welcome to Coronaphobia Day 4. I am angry. That's right. I'm I'm starting to get pissed. I think most Americans are starting to get pissed off now as we realize that the cure is worse than the disease when it comes to government's responses here. There's a lot to be pissed off about, but today we're going to be covering some of the stories that uh, have been neglected as a result of coronaphobia. We've got a lot of exciting things happening all over the country. We've got a bit of a deliberation for what uh, we're going to be doing here with No Force One and the Kokesh for President crew. And uh, join us today on the bus. We have Samantha Kokesh. Samantha, <laughs> Morgan Miller, Carnabucci Kokesh, um, and, and Clover, David Clover, I don't know, David, what's your Arr. stage name? David Clover, the stage name for our driver here, joining us today. Already we have a comment here. This is all bullshit. What up, Adam? Thank you, Greg. Now, I'm just going to start off, why, why am I pissed? I'm pissed because there are people who are carelessly and callously making this crisis worse for entirely selfish reasons. First and foremost, the people doing the fear mongering. And I'm talking to you, mainstream media and government. Yeah, the primary culprits in this crisis. And I, I don't watch... I don't watch the news. I don't watch television, uh, but I, I have I've been manically keeping up with what's going on uh, online, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on the Drudge Report uh, throughout social media everywhere. Uh, and I'm on TikTok now. Find me on TikTok. Same handle at Adam Kokesh. Um, so what is this? Where is Adam? Why is David Hasselhoff on Adam's Facebook page? <laughs> All right. Um, this is great. Sean Joyner already. You have no right to make decisions for others using government as proxy just because you are scared. Absolutely. So what I'm seeing, uh, actually, so I just did a, an interview earlier today with Larry Sharp, a great Libertarian Party activist, former uh, governor of New York candidate, great guy all around doing interviews now, spreading the word with the Sharp way. And one of the things that he told me is that there is a death counter running on most mainstream networks on their on their TV on the, you know their lower third graphics they're they're running a, a case counter and a death counter first of all both of these things are very dangerously misleading uh, first of all the case counter obviously there's a huge lag in testing and there are way more people who have tested positive I'm sorry who, who are positive than have been tested positive and so right away they are distorting that off the uh, off the bat but the death count. This is really offensive. This is really, really offensive. These motherfuckers are willing to put you in harm's way by spreading fear, putting a death toll on your TV screen when they wouldn't dare do such a thing for something like veteran suicide, something that has no benefit to them but would actually save lives. No, they are killing people with fear now. The cure is worse than the disease. The response is going to kill more people. But uh, just as a preview for what we're going to be doing today, I'm going to come back to this. But you may have seen the flatten the curve statistics or the, the, the graphic saying, look, we can't have a huge spike in corona cases. We have we have to go out and, and make sure that this doesn't peak, even if there's the same number of cases. So it never gets into sort of a, a danger zone of burden on, on the healthcare industry where you have people, uh, you know, in, in hospitals overwhelmed, a shortage of beds, all that sort of thing. But again, everything government is doing is making this worse. But I do want to say that this is a great analogy. This graphic that's getting around, and yeah, forgive my, uh, you can tell uh, I was an art major. Obviously, we have uh, a, 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 an analogy here about flattening the curve when it comes to coronavirus that is just as applicable to flattening the curve of martial law, flattening the curve of tyranny. We have to stand up and make sure that the government response to this doesn't get any worse because the repercussions are going to be with us far longer. So don't worry, I promise we will have more uh, art time here and get into some more graphs. I have a lot of things. I'm going to draw into this in terms of details and where we're going if martial law is not curbed. So the dilemma that, that, that I'm facing right now in, in making a decision for what to do with, with our crew and with our efforts, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely going to keep doing these once a day. I really appreciate everybody who's tuning in and sharing this message and help calming people down because this is really important. I mean, in a sense, it's like, 
People are being scared into hurting each other. Like that's what's happening. We are being frightened into doing things that are going to hurt people. And part of me wants to say, hey, 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 everybody just calm down. Don't be afraid. But another part of me wants to say, no, get worked up. Pay attention. Be afraid. Not of coronavirus, but of the real threat here that is the government response. Because it is absolutely fucking insane and is going to hurt more people. So... My considerations are where to go at this point, considering uh, Libertarian State Conventions have been canceled. We're not going to be able to do any real campaign events, even when we tried to before this thing kicked off in uh, Detroit last Sunday. We had, we had what, three people? And it was great, by the way. We got a lot of good connections done and, and uh, met some important people when we did our corona party in, uh, in Detroit on Sunday. So I'm definitely going to be paying attention. This is a really important time for the adults in the room, the libertarians, to stay cool, calm, and collected. And as, as much as I want to be angry, I'm not angry. I see this all as just predictable responses to an overhyped crisis. Now, to the conspiracy theory side of this, yes, I said this yesterday, tons of hilarious, ridiculous conspiracy theories going around, and you don't need to be a conspiracy theorist or to have any special information or analysis or understanding of history to see there's a giant conspiracy in the open. The government is nothing less than a big conspiracy to take advantage of you, to keep the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor, and to take away your rights in order to do it. So what we're seeing in the news today is a kind of settling in to the acceptance of how bad things are going to be in terms of the government response. We had Gavin Newsom, California governor, declaring a complete lockdown for the state of California. Although I will say, what they're able to get away with in terms of lockdowns at this point are relatively minor because the threat of the virus isn't so bad. They say, look, we got to we gotta keep everybody locked in their homes. Well, of course, we have to let people out for essential things. Well, what's an essential thing? Well, if you tell the cop who's trying to keep you in your house, hey, I've got, uh, I've got a sick old grandma I've got to go develop, uh, d deliver uh, supplies to. You know, they're going to let you out. You're going to have ways around this. So I'm tempted uh, to turn this bus into a mobile relief unit. But uh, as, as we just heard from, from Sam, who is now our news desk contributing editor, that uh, Kanye West mm -hmm. has donated $2 million, is that right, to food there's delivery not, services? There's not an exact number available yet, but it's up there. He's donated to two charities, one in Chicago, which is called We Women Empowered. <laughs> which provides a meal delivery service to the elderly people in the South Chicago area. And then the other is the Dream Center in Los Angeles, which helps with a drive through meal service for those that are affected. And it's currently feeding 7,000 people a day and anticipates to rise by another 2,000 within a week. But Sam has also pointed out an even more exciting story of people working around the government partial shutdown here. Although, didn't we called it the government shutdown... When it when it shut down itself or or pretended to shut down Rebooted. itself, what do, what do we? <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the, uh, the reboot. partial martial law that we're experiencing <laughs> and all the workarounds. There's a strip club yes. in Nevada. No, Portland. Port Oregon. Oh, this is Portland, Oregon. Excuse me, because I'm Oregon. I'm worried about I'm worried about Vegas. Uh, but there was a strip club. There is a strip club in Portland. Do we have the name? Can we promote? Can we promote um, them? I, I want to give them a, a, an, an appropriate Let's direct see. shout out for this. The strip club, having been shut down by the state decrees there that had the exception that you can stay in business if you're doing food delivery, they have turned it into Boober Eats, oh, the so stripper great. delivery service stripper. for food. Yeah. So if you're lonely and you're <laughs> hungry, there is a strip club in Oregon that can take care of you. I think we're going to see lots more examples of this, of people... Um, uh, you know, being creative to to work around uh, the the shutdowns and to take care of each other's needs. So, I don't know. Is there is there a need for that? Are there uh, you know people who are going to be doing this? And uh, what was this you just typed? That, that was LeBron James. Yeah. Someone said, let's see, what was it? it was Ryan Ramsey said I thought Kanye crashed a helicopter. I'm confused. No. Said, no oh. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, bad confusion of headlines. Did, did you get the story, uh, the, the, the name of the strip club? I really do want to directly promote them. If you're in, 
If you're an, if, yeah, that's someone just trolling. Um, if not, then yeah, everybody. The greatest <laughs> name for a troll. I mean, I'm not an expert. Troll. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's next level trolling right there. That's what that is, as opposed to uh, an actual factual error. On, on your part. Sam Zero. <laughs> yeah, Sam, has, <laughs> Sam, keep feeding the trolls. We're not trying to feed the it's trolls. We want to go lucky, feed homeless people. It's called the Lucky Devil Lounge. The Lucky Devil Lounge in Portland, Oregon. Go promote them. And, and Boober uh, Eats. Boober Eats, yeah. So you can look that up. It is, um, it is a real story. Oh, we're getting further trolled. Someone pointing out that Kobe <laughs> also had really good beef. Um, but yeah, so only medically necessary was dentistry is allowed. No, it was Kobe, wasn't it? Oh Steven, my God, I don't even know. Oh. Was it Kobe? Did you just say that LeBron James died in a helicopter crash? Is that what we just did? Oh my God, I don't watch basketball, guys. I'm so sorry. Mm, wow. Mm, 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 mm. Shut the hell up. Yeah. Don't take this out of context. I'm this is a joke in voice making fun of racists. The... All those black basketball players Shut look the same. Up. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, We're right. never going to hear the end of this. No, no. But see, now we definitely got out trolled on, yeah, on this did. particular oh, live stream. I, that that so, is so my bad, guys. I'm yeah. so sorry. Okay, so uh, back, yeah, back to, this, back to this back to this decision that, that we're facing here. Um, and, and this is kind of a decision facing everybody right now. Who's, it, who's in a similar circumstance, um, certainly most libertarians in the United States right now, how do we react, right? What do we do to alleviate the suffering to, because that's what we, that's the point of libertarianism, right? To make life better for people. And right now the, uh, the bad shit curve is accelerating as we talked about. And this was a really, again, we're going to get to the, we're going to get to the, uh, the art section of this. Uh, live stream in in just a few minutes here with the uh, flatten the curve graphics for tyranny flatten the curve of martial law um, but do we go out and help people I mean certainly when you see people suffering you want to help people directly one-on-one -on -one. do we go and do do we uh, you know jump in and just throw in and, and, and assist in you know some of these food relief efforts supply relief efforts you know we've got no force one here if people want to donate to us doing that and and there's a there's a great demand for you know showing that kind of libertarian leadership uh, that we you know we get out there with the bus and when we deliver supplies I'm looking at three big cities that I'm in the middle of with my property in Arizona uh, which is in the mountains about an hour west of Flagstaff and um, you know we could go to Phoenix and I just heard from Donna Hancock uh, from Ernie Hancock's uh, wife there that they do Freedoms Phoenix out of their home in Glendale, part of the uh, the Phoenix metro area, and she was saying she just went out shopping and shelves are empty, and there is panic buying happening all over Phoenix. And uh, Ernie was in uh, in New Hampshire helping some friends out with some projects in uh, up up there with the Free State Project, and he is flying home today. Had to go uh, get on a rescheduled flight out of Bangor, Maine, to connect to Newark. And, and hopefully get to Phoenix. Maybe we'll have an update for you on that by the end of the show if, if, he's, uh, if he's tuning in or if anybody keeping up with the, uh, the Hancock situation is joining us today. And um, there, there are gonna be people hurting. Like I think right now we're in this phase, it's kind of reactionary. People can go out and, and buy groceries and come home and feel like they're stocked up and that they're gonna be okay. Uh, medical supplies, all of that. And um, that's not going to last very long. Shit's going to get old fast. People are going to be pissed off. And they're going to they're going to be I mean, I love that we're, we're doing this in the age of the internet. They can't get away with lying that much. They can't get away with spinning that much. Things are going to be unspun if only on the comedy of social media where people are able to poke fun at this and 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 see through the lies, see through the exaggerations and and see that no matter what they're saying, none of it justifies what they are doing. It, it's sort of like uh, you know all these excuses for the global war on terror. Well, 9/11 happened, so we have to invade Iraq and Afghanistan. Wait, what? Huh? Iraq? What? And you're you're once they've got this excuse so embedded in the psyche of the American people, it's really easy to manipulate that fear into doing something that is totally unrelated. So, got a couple comments here. Anthony Roman in Missouri, and the panic is real. Um, 
Milton, are you even allowed to own guns anymore? Well, at the moment, they stop enforcing gun laws. I think I'll be allowed to own guns again. Looking forward to that, if that's where this goes. Yes, I am a convicted felon. I'm not planning on violating any federal firearms laws at the moment, but there are a lot of people thinking, of yes, it's time to, to be ready. Speaking of... That same person asked, uh, you're still alive, apparently. Are you working on your next arrest? How will you do it? Open carry while high on mushrooms? Hey, that's not a bad idea. No, but no, that's <laughs> that, that's a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> so that. about that, like we are considering that if, if we go out with the bus into one of these cities... Okay, so I was uh, talking about Phoenix, um, Los Angeles, huge homeless population that's going to be really affected by this. We're going to see very shortly here what the repercussions of this are, if people are going to keep being able to feed homeless people, if there's going to be relief, if shelters stay functional. And then Las Vegas. And, and you know, Las Vegas is kind of my hometown city now, even though it's not in my home state. Uh, I'm about as close to Vegas as Phoenix. And I uh, spend bo a lot of time in both cities when I'm at home. Uh, you might have seen a lot of the man on the street videos I've done in the last couple of years have been out of Vegas. I love going to the strip and interviewing people there. They have shut down the casinos. Yeah, casinos in Vegas are shut down. You, you, you know the implications that's going to have for the people in Las Vegas? They're going to be really hurting very soon here. I mean, remember, this is a desert in, uh, or a city in the middle of a desert with very few natural resources that depends on people coming there and giving them money for fun. And I don't think they are going to be doing very well in a week or two here. Not only do we have the issues with clubs, strip clubs, casinos, but there is a significant homeless population in the city of Vegas. Street performers, of course, are not going to be able... There are a lot of people in Vegas who survive as street performers, and that's all they're able to do. They are now also unemployed. Remember, there's this huge, huge sector of the American economy, service industry, that is basically shut down right now. Uh, or, or at least, prime, you know, mostly shut down. And a lot of those people are going to be hurting here very shortly. So, you know, whether the answer is to get out and get active and, and, and try to help people or step back and, and be a voice of calm and reassurance. And just know that I, we can keep doing, uh, you know, the, these press conferences every day and being able to talk to people directly and, and get some real news perspective out there. It, who knows? I, I'm still deliberating this right now. We are going to our, uh, our our centrally located bug out that is continentally centrally located. We're not really telling anybody where that is because the person who's hosting us, we should be there later tonight. Uh, the person who is hosting us doesn't want people to know that we're there. Hopefully we can change their mind about this. I think this person, uh, again, respecting their privacy, is, is a little bit overblowing the security threat, but I'll tell you in a minute why they might be right to do this. So with this possibility, do we, do we go hunker down or do we go jump in and provide relief efforts? I don't know. It's going to depend on what's going on, but I do see a really exciting opportunity here to reduce the viciousness of the state because already we see that there are prisons all across the country releasing inmates. Now, here's the scary part of this. You tell government, hey, stop locking up innocent people because they might get coronavirus. And let's, let's, let, 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 can we let out some victimless criminals? No, they're going to fuck that up too. And got this story from Sam earlier today in Ventura, California, they have started releasing inmates. Who did they release? Someone who went to jail for a, a rape murder from 20 years ago who was released 10 years later and got out and committed another rape murder and is now, excuse me, attempted. Yeah, two was, rapes attempted in the 80s and then was released on house arrest 20 years later to go out and violently rape and almost kill a 14-year-old girl. Yeah. He got released yesterday. Yeah. So the government can't even do that, right? We say, hey, release the victimless criminals. There's no reason. It's like, as a libertarian, as someone who understands basic ethics, you don't lock someone up for a victimless crime. That makes you the criminal. Government is the criminal in executing the war on drugs and locking up innocent people. It's bad enough as it is. But now you're subject. And, and by the way, society as a whole has been like, yeah, we're not really good with victims. I mean, yeah, lock up the drug dealers and, 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 and you know, the, the, the dead, bad, dangerous people, whoever government convinces us are scary yeah lock them up but victimless criminals i don't know enough of us have had 
uh, arrests or family members have their lives ruined in the drug war that uh, I'd say the average American at this point is like, mm, no, that's, this thing is bullshit. We need to let people, uh, you know, uh, we need to stop doing this. Manny Sevilla, I'm from Ventura. <laughs> Great, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> having having spent a little time in Ventura myself, Sam is here doing, yeah, I represent Ventura. I'm native, five natives. Yeah, it's, it's uh, an interesting, distant satellite city of Los Angeles, Ventura, California. Um, it's beach ghetto. Beach ghetto. Yes, that's. I'm sure Sam has more ways to make fun of her hometown, but beach ghetto is, is an appropriate way of describing it. Um, and I, I think it's now, I, I, this is why I put in the, the hashtag for this, uh, for this live stream, release victimless criminals. Uh, I think this might be the opportunity. Maybe instead of going to uh, to do relief efforts or, or, or sit at home and, and make videos and, and do podcasts and things like that, maybe the answer is to go start protesting in front of prisons where the state is specifically subjecting people to a legitimate health threat. If you're in prison, and, and, and um, raise your hand if you've been to jail. Anybody? Anybody? You can comment. I'm sure. Oh, hey, a couple hands in the, in, the, in, the, in the. Two out of two hands being raised here. Four out of two. Four out of four. Two, two, two out of two people in the room here raising their hands. Yes. So if you've been to jail, you understand how vulnerable you are in that situation. You can't get access to medical supplies. You have limited access to medical care. And you are. Uh, see, Anthony Roman. Raise his hand. Thank you, Anthony. Um, Milton, me, yes. Okay, we got a bit of a, a, a lag here on on the broadcast, obviously, because those are just coming in. Thank you so much for everybody who's been arrested and is is proud to say that they've been victimized by the state. Yeah. So maybe the opportunity here is to really push for releasing victimless criminals, and uh, I, I think that would be a uh, a very worthy thing for libertarians to be doing in light of this crisis so we shout out to ohio for doing that shout out to the the government the state government the state in ohio. ohio yeah has we will <laughs> all jail inmates of victimless crimes did they do that properly i didn't see that story myself I saw that all right yesterday. we'll get some details on that while i keep rambling here <laughs> so yeah we're not afraid to praise a state government as an evil institution when it does the right thing and in this case there are probably Probably some good people in state governments taking advantage of the opportunity to do the right thing. So interesting comment here from Ryan Ramsey. When this goes Mad Max, all the rapists are getting their food and toilet paper confiscated from my stash. Ooh, Ryan Ramsey, certainly someone who's not afraid of controversy and, and standing up uh, to do righteous violence when necessary. Um, Underneath it, Scott. I, I hope you. I hope. I hope, Ryan, you keep the emphasis on the righteousness here. If this turns to vigilantism, but that is a realistic possibility that we see on the horizon, possibly coming here. So, Sam, any any more uh, details or on predators on those stories or any anything else from the yes, comments before we get to the next Wolfschlager. subject? W O L L S. C H L A G E R. Wolfschlager. Wolfschlager. Yes. I will be posting um, the article and a picture of him. Excellent. It's yes. In public for everybody in Ventura back home, and Adam will be tagged in as well, so that all of you guys can see it and have access to it too. So when most you now again we make a mistake as libertarians often of of considering uh, government as a monolithic entity or anthropomorphizing it as an institution. Remember, it's not. It's a group of people in an institution doing mostly evil things, right? But when it comes to the individuals who are now doing good things, taking advantage of this opportunity, there are a lot of good people in government. I know it pains us to say as libertarians sometimes, but when we see that, it's really important that we praise it. So we're gonna be posting that story. would appreciate it if people share it, and we encourage government to do other good things, to say people in government to do, to do other good things. So your friend Brian Ellis came to say hi, apparently. And then Nazis on here? Cool, I'm out. I wonder who he's talking about. All right. <laughs> um, if you're a Nazi in the audience, raise your hand so Brian can go hate on you from his own page as well. Uh, Tegan on to Swaraj, people should just calm down. I did Absolutely. Not see. I did not see any Nazis on my feed today. Uh, Anthony Roman, I agree. Give credit where credit is due. Um, so. I, I got we got one more uh, health update here from those of us on the bus. We we think we have coronavirus. Like actually, like, and and 
this just go to your house? this just gets yeah can we come hang out yeah no. this just gets to the danger of the paranoia here because like do we know if we have it nah, like, I mean I know I've been exposed we know that we've been around people you know traveling before the uh, the lockdown started a couple weeks ago we were traveling uh, so if you get a funny flu coldish kind of thing you're gonna go ah oh, it's corona and the problem with this is the panic and hysteria for this this is coming out of mainstream media headlines they are finally having to tell people to calm down don't go to the hospital unless you really need medical care and this is i i put this out as a psa this is something that's important to spread among everyone don't go to a hospital unless you absolutely have to this is one way that we counter the fear mongering we counter the the effect of of the the uh, corona phobia because it is making things worse across the board and one of the legitimate fears raised by the fear mongers is that if hospitals get overloaded not only will we not be able to take care of people who need it with coronavirus infections but we're going to be less capable of taking care of those who normally we would need to be taking care of in hospitals people with heart attacks strokes diabetic episodes uh traumatic injuries all of these things we're going we are going to be less capable of, of taking care of them because hospitals are, uh, are are being overloaded. So now in our case, um, Sam had uh, you know some some sort of normal flu symptoms, a little achiness, a little tiredness, a little sore throat. Forty eight hours, I'm already pretty much better. By tomorrow, I'll be perfectly fine. Oh, so what do we? Can we call this a forty eight hour flu now? To the forty eight hour kung flu. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, we can make fun of racists here. No, I think Kung Flu is just a hilarious name for it. Yeah, it came from China, call it that. Uh, obviously, when President Trump goes out of his way to call it the Chinese virus, there's an extra level of fear-mongering there that should be avoided. So, it, actually, uh, David, uh, our driver, and myself had a what we thought was like a stomach bug. Uh, well, how long? Was, was that last weekend? Uh, it was the weekend before. It was two weeks ago. We, we, we thought that it was possibly food that we ate. In uh, Illinois, we thought it could have been food we ate in Illinois, but that didn't really explain it, except that because I was like a day or two behind you. Right. I was really like a full two when we first started getting the the stomach issues, um, and these are also bathroom issues. Uh, when we started having stomach issues like two weeks ago, David was a couple days ahead of me, so we're like, is it food poisoning? And it, it was started out something like that, and then uh, it was like, well, it doesn't really explain the lag, unless I had your leftovers, <laughs> you know, like then, right, yeah. then maybe. Um, but if it's a bug, it's transmissible. Um, and, and again, one of the things that pisses me off so much about this is how in in a time of 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 a true health crisis, a small one, but a real health crisis, government makes it worse by slowing down important information getting out there. And we found out literally last night, finally, it's coming out that half of corona cases in hospitals include digestive issues, diarrhea type issues, stomach issues. Never explain the and, toilet paper. and they yeah, that's that's why we have to have a run on the no the the American people knew better. We were all psychic having a run on toilet paper before they even announced that this might be a diarrhea diarrhea issue. Um, so Whew. Uh, then Sam had uh, a little bit of a sore throat, tiredness, a little achiness, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's feeling over it already. I'm, I think I'm coming to actually like the worst of it for myself, and yeah, it is one of it, last night. it is one of the weird things about Corona, uh, about the, 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 the that it can kind of come and go as as, as a disease, unlike uh, other flus uh, or, or cold viruses that, that we're aware of. And again, we're we're, we're going on limited information and that's really disturbing that in in the world we live in when something like this happens we are capable of so much better than what we are doing and a lot of it is because government limits the flow of information in a crisis and a, I, I can't say this enough because this is one of the greatest crimes that Donald Trump has committed in this is asking the CDC ordering the excuse me the CDC to conduct its deliberations in secret yeah so even what should be a big, important government body making these decisions, no, nope, they're doing their deliberations in secret. And that should be bothersome to everybody. So last night, I 
I just started feeling kind of fluey, like, and usually run down. It just kind of hit me. You know, we were dealing, we got, by the way, we still have major electrical problems with, uh, with the bus right now. Yeah. If anybody wants to help with some of the interior systems, um, please send me a direct message. Um, we are obviously somewhere relatively centrally located. I can't give away too much of my location right now. Um, what, what can I say that would help us out? We are coming into Texas from the north. I guess we can say that much. That, that's, yeah. that gives a general idea. We're, we can say where we are right now, right? We're at the Anytime Fitness in, uh, are we in, we're, we're in Alabama now? Arkansas. Ar Arkansas. So we're in Arkansas. And uh, what city? Do we know what? Does anybody know what city we're in? Nope. Nope. Just the one off the freeway that had an anytime fitness that wasn't shutting that. down yeah. for the fear oh, mongering. West Memphis. Oh, West, West Memphis, Arkansas. West Memphis, Arkansas. Thank you. No, we were here before. You remember we were at this gym? Don't you remember? No, I probably. Yeah. Through. No, but you were here, um, and then we went. We went to the Walmart around the corner afterwards. This is where I, there were two really cool dudes working at this gym who wanted to talk about freedom and be delegates. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the one where you took the picture of me looking really buff, oh, that, that one, yeah, yeah, at the you water fountain, really yeah, so, um, last night, I just, you know, just got, uh, you know, a little bit of a, and it wasn't like a headache, like a sharp headache, it was just like a dull, kind of sleepy headache, and, and a bit of, you know, achiness, and, and again, connected with the, the, the stomach thing that, that David and I were experiencing, I like a bit of a, sort of, swollen scratchy feeling in my throat um but yeah overall like nothing that would have slowed me down one bit you know i i tried to get some good sleep last night and uh you know i'm just gonna make sure again keep up my self-care game we we've been having a hard time finding gyms that are open which is really frustrating <laughs> I, we're trying to be healthy in the face of a health crisis. no you can't be healthy oh okay yeah i get it go do body weight exercises go run whatever um i want to go to the gym that's how we shower on the road most of the time by the way so yeah it is getting a little a little ripe in here but uh the boys are starting to smell like wet gym socks oh yeah blame it on the boys I okay the all boys. right all right all right <laughs> anthony rome yes the world's a gym thank you very much now that might be uh you know, I mean, the, the gym industry getting hit hard by this. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are going to be suffering economically. So um, that's life on the road with the coronavirus. Uh, any any other stories you want to get to before we go back to the, the visual aid section of today's press conference, babe? Well, speaking of, you were talking about helping people out in the homeless. Burger King is giving out free kids meals in response to the virus. Hey, good for Burger King. Also good for them for being the first with the Impossible Burger. I'm a big fan of that. Impossible Whoppers are amazing. Oh, uh, but free free meals, that's great. <laughs> and, and, and to see that in light of the fear mongering, the circumstances that have been created by this fear mongering, uh, a lot of people in corporate America are having to respond in some really beautiful positive ways are, are there any other examples of this um 13 recreation centers around los angeles are turned into homeless shelters by sunday awesome yeah so hey if you can't use the gym to lift weights at least we can use it to house homeless people that's that's yeah. one nice side effect of all of this mm -hmm. um any, any other uh news stories you wanted us to get into before before we get into the, the visual aid portion of our, our broadcast. Well, I was reading an article that said the coronavirus is delaying NASA's Artemis mission work. So NASA's been put on hold <laughs> from the virus. All right. Those were my thoughts. Had lots of people, oh, this is replying to Sean Stevens' melody, uh, writes, had lots of people in our town with a month-long flu this winter. You know what? We we did too. I had virus and this, B. So Sam had flu B and was in the January. hospital and got tested in January. It's funny I got tested and didn't have it. Mm -hmm. um, but you're having stomach issues. I'm not. I was having uh, w w w a bunch of people around th th that I was around in December. Um, We're sick. You remember our our driver before David and and his son. And oh, the people that we were staying with yeah. in Texas, uh, it was it was like a, a, a persistent sinus infection yeah. for for a lot of us. So, you know, maybe that's connected. And it's, again, it's the, the lack of of just clear channels of medical information not being interfered with by government is really disturbing in this because who knows how long this has been out there, um, and and the, the lack of certainty makes it really easy to to get people 
uh, you know, riled up with the fear. Carl Krambeck, which star did you make a wish on to compel those magical singing mice to make that shirt? Oh, yeah, people are uh, asking when you're performing Hamlet that you're wearing puffy Shakespeare pants under there. Is that you? Are you telling them no. that I'm that <laughs> no, I'm wearing I'm sweats why. with a dress shirt? No, Did I you didn't tell say them anything. that? They, everyone thinks you're naked under there. I said, sorry to pop the fantasy bubble, but he is wearing pants. I am wearing pants. Um, <laughs> but let's see. They're calling that your Shakespeare shirt. My Shakespeare. This is a regular white noise because it's. I think it's you haven't been lifting because no gyms are open, so it's. Oh, I'm, to get I'm shrinking now. My bag, my shirts are getting bagged. I yeah. gotta get back in the gym. All right, no, it hasn't been that long. Jeez. All right, so here's the the Sean Stevens comment that a lot of people are, are responding to. Coronavirus mimics the common flu, which is why it's easy to confuse it as such. I've noticed many people in my circle complaining of having a terrible flu that was worse than usual this past winter. It's possible that this has been in the states longer than we think. Yes, that's another just yes. scary possibility if we don't have. Uh, you know, good information. Um, someone is hating in here. Matt Snook, what is that? Fuck Elon. Elon has flamethrowers. Oh, yeah. Elon's, yeah, of course. You know, anybody. Okay, Elon Musk. Uh, she, she's making ventilators, something like that. Oh, that's right. So there, there was in the headlines also that Elon Musk is uh, is trying to go into a kind of emergency production for ventilators, and I, I think it's a really good moment for seeing what people are really made of what do you do in a time of crisis like this and the people who control massive resources like corporate headquarters of burger king like elon musk are being forced to say okay if you want to maintain your credibility you got to step up and it, it we're gonna when, when we uh get to to sort through what's happened here we're going to see uh, you know, a lot of true colors revealed that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Already, one of the uh, most disturbing stories coming out of the federal government, you probably saw this, Senator Burr uh, was caught on tape having warned uh, members of, what was it, the Tar Heel Group, where you pay up to $10,000 to have access to senators and congressmen and, and uh, high-level muckety-mucks wearing fancy hats. And what he did in a meeting of this Tar Heel Group was uh, warn people that this is going to be a big economic deal and to, to, to advise them to adjust accordingly. And then he sold uh, between half a million and a million and a half dollars worth of his shares in the stock market hmm yeah so there's a lot of insider trading going on with this where he was then going out in public telling the public a different message being calming and reassuring and and that's great and i'm, I'm glad that he was taking that tone but if he was anticipating that the government was going to fuck things up so bad in the economy he knew what was happening and he took advantage of his constituents everybody else in in the country who owns shares who isn't able to do this kind of insider trading People with 401ks are going to be screwed for a long time. Um, and I suppose that's an, an appropriate transition to the graphic aid portion of today's broadcast. So I'm going to draw another chart here, see if I can get it a little bit better to scale. And I'm going to look, I'm going to first draw the curve of this, the spike of, you know, what coronavirus cases might look like if we don't flatten the curve and then what it would look like if we do flatten the curve. So this is the graphic that, that's getting around uh, all over the internet, and, and I'm really glad that it is. This is a good understanding. And in the graphic, they're telling people, stay calm, wash your hands, practice basic hygiene, and what we can do is we can avoid this spike in cases and instead flatten the curve and have a lower hump, which means that there's never gonna be this area here if it gets you know maybe above, above this line where when, if it gets into this level of burden on the healthcare system, you're going to see the shortage of hospital beds. You're going to see um, all, all of the other problems that we talked about before with overloading the healthcare system. I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit and uh, get this in the shot better. So if you are paying attention to this, that's good. It's very important that this that we see this is part of the reality of, of a viral outbreak like this and that we pay appropriate attention and make sure that the the cases don't spike that we're not careless that that we practice appropriate hygiene and for most of us most of us that's what we were doing already i don't lick doorknobs i wash my hands i take care of myself i don't really get sick that often and if i do it doesn't slow me down much and so if everybody just 
up their game. And maybe that's maybe that's a good part of the wake up call in this that America gets healthier. We all learn from this. We all get just generally healthier and safer as a result. That would be great. But this metaphor here, this this curve analogy, this 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 graphic representation is also extremely useful for understanding the government response. Because if we see this as a, as a purely medical phenomenon, these are, these are the cases, and this is based on the assumption that it's kind of inevitable that it's gonna get around. If you don't fully self-quarantine, you're gonna get this thing eventually, or at least you're gonna get exposed and get a very minor version of this. But here's a much more dangerous reality. If you take these numbers or these lines, instead of representing cases of coronavirus, if you take these lines to mean the amount of tyranny that we are experiencing, the amount of martial law, there's a much different effect. Now, hypothetically, let's see, we, if, if, if this is where we are today, right, and we've got, we've got this much martial law happening, we've got this much of an increase in government power fucking things up. Let's say tomorrow they find the cure, right, and the, the spike in cases ends up just going straight back down to effectively zero. That's great. You know, maybe there maybe there's a little tail on this of, of of cases coming in later, or or of people having prolonged symptoms, as we've seen. Some people who are particularly vulnerable to this end up needing hospitalization for as much as six weeks. I mean, if you're on, uh, you know, death's door and you have this extra health stress that pushes you over the edge, then yeah, that that's going to be a problem. There might be a bit of a tail to this. Here's the here's the real problem though, because the curve of martial law doesn't go down the same way. It has a harder, longer tail because that's the economic effect. That's the legal effect. If government came out tomorrow and said, hey, all the lockdown, all the restrictions, all the, the, the emergency laws, the state of emergency, it's all going away. It doesn't matter. There will still be this huge tail effect that is unemployment, that is mortgages being defaulted on, people not making car payments, people, especially in the service industry, being out of work. Even if everybody were to go back to work tomorrow, which is unrealistic for a lot of reasons, but let's say they lifted all of the restraints and things got a lot better, everybody was able to more or less go back to work, you would still have all of the ripple effects from just from the tyranny getting to that point. But here's the problem. Now, I don't think it can really accelerate. I don't think we can see an acceleration of, of the, the curve of martial law. But what if it keeps going up straight? What if government keeps getting worse? What if we get more locked? And, and what this looks like here is actual lockdowns. What we have now is kind of a partial martial law, partial shutdowns, and it's getting worse and it's gonna keep going. But let's say it, it, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. What we're gonna see here is real control of the economy. We're seeing already Donald Trump uh, proposing a further socialist takeover of the economy with bailouts to companies where the government would take ownership stake in this. Well, what do you call it when the government owns the means of production? Socialism. So, or communism, I don't know. Yeah, all, all these dangerous leftist philosophies that are just absolutely ignorant of economics. We see that Trump doesn't care about freedom. He doesn't stand by his free market principles. And I've been telling you this from the beginning that Donald Trump is a socialist. And now, because you didn't listen, it's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get really dangerous. In a time of crisis, when you have a socialist as a president, he's going to consolidate power. He's going to rip you off to give money to his friends in the banking class and in corporate America. So, what what this represents so this keeps going and going and going this is forced vaccinations this is complete socialist control of the economy this is f prolonged martial law and it, and it could keep going but here's the thing if it gets to that point does government take on power with the intention of relinquishing it of giving it back no this is not going to have a leveling off and a coming down for a long time. If government takes on this much power and they really are getting to enforce nationalized uh, industry, uh, martial law at the national level, if they're really able to impose more quarantines, forced vaccinations, who knows where this could go, that if even if even if the virus levels off, say we flatten the curve, we get to this point here, and the actual bio threat is is essentially done controlled. Well, guess what? Government power 
is going to stay right up there for a long time. And this is a lot of people being uncomfortable. This is a lot of people suffering. This is increased homelessness, poverty, inability to pay bills, to pay rent, to, to, to conduct normal business. Th that's what this represents. So when I say flatten the curve of martial law, far, flatten the curve of tyranny, it's really critical that we keep an eye on this and make sure that it follows, that, 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 that we turn the corner here not up here, because if we let government get up to here, it's going to be ugly for a long, long time. So I don't know how to do this. I wish I could say there was an easy answer, but I think it's a lot of things, okay? So first of all, speaking out, share this message. If you're watching this broadcast, and you, and, and, you know, I hope you'll share it. This is really critical information, really critical perspective. I have some great feedback already. Jeff, you're so right about that graph. Thank you. This is, you know, maybe we need to do this properly in, uh, in a little infographic that can be easily shared and got, gotten around. So we can say, look, curve, or uh, flatten the curve of tyranny flatten the curve of government, flatten the curve of martial law. And this is really critical that more Americans have this awareness because as Americans are frightened into turning to government, they are going to make this a lot worse. If we can keep people calm about the threat from the virus and show them that the real threat here is from government, we can turn this corner sooner. Either way, we've got a government disaster on our hands. There's a real crisis here that is gonna have long-term economic implications that are gonna be very <coughs> ugly for a lot of Americans. So. First of all, keep speaking out, share this message, keep people aware, share these live streams. If you can share this one right now, make sure you can do it. Maybe, hey, Jeff's saying make the infographic and I'll share it. Maybe, maybe someone in our in our audience who, who's got the skills can can take my chicken scratches here and turn this into a meaningful graphic that, that shows this comparison uh, of flattening the curve for the virus and flattening the curve for government action and tyranny and showing people that the long-term negative effects from the government response are going to be a lot worse than the negative effects from the virus itself. So um, I encourage everybody to, to figure out how it is that you're sharing this or capturing, presenting this message, find a way to share it and get it out there. This is the real threat. And this isn't, oh, because I'm a libertarian, I want to be left alone. No, I'm doing this because I care about people. I want people to be happy. I want people to have their needs met. I want everybody to have the freedom that we're supposed to be enjoying as human beings. I want our rights respected. I want a peaceful, productive, and ethical world, not one controlled by violent thugs in government. And what we have in, in this, like you might say, look, if we, Adam, if we, if, if we flatten the curve here, that this danger zone, you know, this represents... Uh, a few thousand deaths unnecessarily. It's a real realistic possibility. And what we, we saw a bit of a numerical con uh, comparison today with Italy uh, based on their population, although they have a, uh, surprise, surprise, a very elderly population compared to most similar countries in the world, certainly compared to the United States, where they have 25% of their population over 60 or 65. And in the United States, it's only uh, 16%. So we significantly less old people in the United States proportionately. But even if we see it as bad as in Italy, what did, what was it? They have a uh, population uh, uh, well, let's see. No, no. They were, they were doing, doing the death statistic comparison with China. And in China, they had uh, what? what worse how many deaths in China now? We, I mean, who knows? I don't trust the numbers. But the latest numbers for China were something like, like 3,000 right? A, a couple, about 100,000 cases. That's where they're saying 3% death rate. Not realistic. There are way more people infected who haven't been tested. But if that's the death rate in China, if 3,000 people died in China, well, then there's going to be 1,000 in the United States. We're about a third of the population in China. Um, so here we go. Latest numbers on coronavirus from uh, global confirmed cases. We have 271,000 and 11,000 deaths and 90,000 recovered. Now, I don't trust these numbers to be accurate, but to give us a vague, misreported, perhaps exaggerated, distorted idea of what's going on here, at worst, we're seeing a, uh, with, with, with about 10,000 deaths out of about 300,000 confirmed cases, a one in 300, Yeah. right? Um, Look how many recovered? I'm sorry, 10 in 300. Uh, chance of dying. That's where they get this 3.4% number. Again, not 
anywhere near realistic. It's much lower than that. We've heard plenty of experts come out. Even uh, the, the the guy working with Trump from the CDC said, look, th th this is... Uh, it's not that bad. It's not 3.4%. It's more like 1% as opposed to the flu, which is 0.1%. So, oh my gosh, it's 10 times as bad as the flu. No, that's going to come down also. And people are, like I said, when people see how much we have been made to suffer by the government in response over so little, we are going to be really pissed off. And there's going to be a big opportunity for change in all of this. So what do we have? Is this deaths in the United States. All right. So in the United States, 17,000 confirmed cases, 230 deaths, 125 recovered. Again, hugely biased statistics. But what, what I wanted to do was compare the Italian death rate. And this is um, on a post I shared from Dr. Uh, I think it's at Offit. It's a, a next post down on, on my Facebook page if you want to look at that. Um, doing the, the comparison that like, hey, even if this is as bad as Italy, not that many Americans are going to die. And yeah, it's a tragedy. You know, a single death is a tragedy. A million is a statistic. It's not going to be that many. Right now, we are looking at these individual tragic cases that are getting around in the news and being highly sensationalized. But really, uh, the facts don't lie and that this is going to be much uh, less destructive than everybody is predicting in terms of the virus itself. That is going to come out very clearly in, in the near future. Uh, some people are predicting that this is going to last a, a very long time with the virus outbreak. Uh, that's quite possible. I think we're going to see it just become part of our normal, uh, you know, library of infectious diseases that are part of the human experience and it's going to kind of level out to be just another thing that we deal with like the flu did you get that corona flu oh you've got that corona flu all right well you better stay home and have plenty of chicken noodle soup you know like that's that that's where this is going the the surge in deaths even if there is a surge in deaths it's like well what if we all got the flu all of a sudden yeah you're going to have a surge in deaths because we have a new virus that is especially viral so Let's go to questions now. Uh, we're almost at the top of the hour. So we've got to wrap this up here. Babe, do we have, what do we have from the chat? Um, let's see. How can you apply the non-aggression principle while resisting martial law and any social disobedience? How can you apply the non-aggression principle? The non-aggression principle is a universal ethical standard that uh, is, is has applicable in every situation. So how do you, how do you apply it in martial law? Uh, it, it's, I mean, you just keep being ethical. Uh, even when government is doing unethical things, keep being ethical. Uh, I think the bigger question is, how do you confront people who are violating the non-aggression principle using the virus as an excuse because they're scared? And I, I think, think this, that, that was what right. Was I, I, the question. I think this is a great exercise in uh, how to deal with fear leading to violence because if we learn the lessons from this and we apply them to government in the future we'll be able to get rid of government entirely at least as we know it or transfer uh, you know transition into something that's voluntary because all of the things that government does are based on some unjustified fear and so if there are people doing violence and that's what government is because they've been scared about terrorism or poverty or the drugs or the, the Mexicans or the Muslims or whatever it is, then we are going to learn in this crisis, I think, how to talk people down from that fear or people will get a very serious lesson in talking themselves down. And I think that's going to be critically important. So to the question about resisting martial law and civil disobedience, that's that's a different question. Like I said, I don't think we're going to get to, you know, full lockdown martial law. It's it's really just a, a partial martial law where the government is threatening us to control and manipulate and, of course, further exploit, consolidate wealth and power. In Los Angeles, which I was looking at, is considering going there to do some relief efforts with, with, uh, with No Force One. Uh, they are threatening misdemeanors and imprisonment for people who are violating, uh, vi you know, the, the lockdown orders for the state of California and the unique orders that they have for L.A. County and the city of L.A. But it's so easy to get out of one of those arrests. I haven't heard of anybody actually yet being arrested for violating, uh, you know, lockdown orders, except for the one individual patient who had been identified as a patient and then, you know, made it you know clear that he was he was not following lockdown orders. But um, there is a question. They're, they're not really going to be able to enforce this. I, I think the civil disobedience that's important here 
is just going about your life and helping people where you can and, and not being intimidated. If you have to lie to a cop, say, oh, I'm going to feed my grandma because when I'm doing, when I'm doing whatever it is, do it. There's no problem lying to people who are threatening you with violence. So now um, Ryan is, is in the chat. Confront them with guns or axes. No, 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 no. De-escalate. Always, 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 and especially in the face of fear, be calming and reassuring. That's most important. In, in, in the situations that you might find if police are excited, feared, uh, scared, and aggravated and, and doing violence or threatening you with violence, even then, it is all the more important that you respond in a cool, calm, and collected manner. I don't think it's going to escalate to them coming to your home where you're going to have to resist violently. But if it does come to that, yeah, absolutely. Do whatever it takes to defend yourself. All right, what else do we have, babe? So, like I was trying to say about um, getting arrested and stuff, uh, Stephanie O'Day says, Hubby's worried they're making room in prisons for people who don't comply later. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've considered that. That would be a really, it's, it's a really interesting possibility that if what are they they're going to arrest all of us political dissidents to, to refill the jail cells after they've cleared them of all the uh, pot smokers or they're just going to put yeah. all the patients in there yeah. or they're going to lock up patients they're going to turn them into uh, emergency hospitals actually that would be a, a, a really legitimate use of jails yeah. if if they yeah. uh, were serious um, <laughs> is to turn them into so non-secure facilities and and open them up for patients and make them emergency hospitals oh, open but them up. What? What did you think I meant? I meant imprison the patient. Oh no, 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 no! Of course not. Yeah, no, but this is. Oh yeah, for forced quarantine. Yeah, and that's a frightening possibility: is that if they open up a, a prison as an emergency hospital for people with coronavirus, that they are going to be uh, locking people down in a kind of forced quarantine. I don't think that's going to happen. But the fact that hey, government has all of these facilities, they're going. Oh my gosh, we might not have enough hospital beds. Hey, you have all these rooms with beds, and you're using them to lock up nonviolent offenders, drug use. Really? Hmm. Shows you what the government priorities are here. Reminds me of all the police departments and, and evidence lockers where they have rape test kits piling up, but they test all the drugs so they can put people in jail for that right away. Um, so yeah, that's uh, uh, that's my thinking on that. Do we have any other uh, any other burning questions or comments that we need to share before we wrap this up and, and say goodbye for the day? No, but there's a couple of news stories I wanted to share. All right. Um, Greenland is losing ice sheets six times faster than the 1990s. We've gained 0.7 inches in sea level between Greenland and the Antarctic. Um, Olympic and, torch you know, reaches Japan. I, I'm, I'm sure everybody here knows my thoughts on, on global warming, that we need peaceful solutions to it, not violent government solutions to it, whether it's uh, pollution or climate change or global warming, whatever the threat is. And yeah, it's a little disturbing that there might be something that we should be paying attention to and responding to right now, and we're not because everybody's obsessed with coronaphobia. Uh, to all my sports fans, Roger Mayweather died Tuesday at the age of 58. He was Floyd Mayweather's uncle and trainer. Wow, and, young age. Yeah, so he was... A it wasn't champion. corona, was it? No, it hasn't been released, but he did have pre-existing health conditions. Yeah, so here's just... To go back to the statistics for just a second here, when they say this many people have died of corona, I'm pretty sure that's an exaggerated number. Uh, and I, I don't want to say for sure now, but it, it is quite likely that uh, they are reporting people as having died from corona who just died from other things that they couldn't prove or didn't get tested. So I, those numbers are going to be adjusted down. All right, what else, babe? Um, oh, hold on. Ryan points out Florida has like two years of rape kits yeah. piled up. It just shows this. How fucking sick are we as a society that we trust this institution of government to keep us safe when that's the reality is that they are supposed to keep us safe from rapists. They're releasing them from jail. They don't even test the rape kits after people report rapes. They don't go after rapists the way they go after pot smokers. That should tell you something. Yeah, someone said they can smell my it's Axe true. body spray yeah. through the live stream. No, <laughs> no but not. you can get Corona if you watch this long enough. Um, no, I don't use Axe. I, I have very mild 
uh, natural, chemical like free, free deodorant type stuff. Uh, don't even, uh, what Tom's? Yeah, Tom's, Tom's is what I usually use. Yeah, Carl, Axe Tom's smells like Maine. date rape. I can smell the Brads and Chads when you say Axe body spray. <laughs> I don't miss California for that. All right. Um, just one last story that caught my eye was, and I quote, white woman beat down on flight after calling black people the N-word. <laughs> say that again? This is quoted, white woman beat down on a flight after calling black people the N-word. This was on American oh, Airlines when she called a crew member the N-word and got jumped by multiple passengers. Yeah. <laughs> Why, people? Why can't you just be a racist in peace in America today? <laughs> can't you be left alone? No, no, no. So this is actually an interesting story. I'm the comedian. As, I swear it's okay. Yeah, no, but as, as, a, as a data point here, that... Nerves are getting frayed. Yeah. I mean, what what would happen before Corona? If if, if you called someone the N word on, on a flight in public, you get shamed. Depends on where yeah, you are. Where uh, the uh, and how drunk are coming from. But but I it's mean. people on. So we, like I said earlier about the story with Ernie Hancock, uh, he was on a flight that had been rescheduled and still only had six passengers. People in people in airports on airlines and in, in staff, you know, they're they're on edge right now. And and I think in that sense, much more inclined to to violence, to to uh, to, to something like this. Um, so, who knows? But uh, I, I, that that's what has me inclined to say, let's go bug out. You know, let's let's go let's just go to our, our property in Arizona. Like I said, I got ten acres in the mountains. People are always in their mind. It's um it's you know I've got I've got a shipping container. I've got I've got solar power. Um, Home cooked mood. Home cooked. Cooked well, we don't yet, but we might. Um, and, and if people want to come out there and, and, and you know bring up bring some resources, bring some bottled water, that would be about the safest place you could possibly be. And I, I would. I think it's safe to predict that things are going to get ugly here soon. Yeah. When people start getting really uncomfortable, um, are there going to be people breaking into stores? Are there going to be riots? Is there going to be some kind of uh, you know violence LA in the streets? Police department is now patrolling even harder. For the closed stores because of possible lootings. Looting, right? That's that's really what we've seen in LA. You know, following Rodney King and those riots, something that they're familiar with there. So whether this gets worse is, uh, you know, not really a question. It's just how much worse and, and and for how long, and then how should we respond? You know, I feel relatively safe. I hate to play the uh, young, healthy, white male card. But yeah, I mean, I, I know that, that, that I'm relatively safe, that, that I'm not, you know, but I, I would be afraid of, you know, being caught in such a situation or being uh, subject to some kind of police overreaction in such a situation. I don't want to head for the hills and, uh, you know, abandon people who are, you know, in need of help. All right, another great comment here. DMT and chill. Yes, you are accurately predicting a lot of what might happen in the mountains should we all end up, uh, you know, getting back there. But, um, yeah. Is, is that, uh, I don't think that's a responsible reaction to this situation to say hey I've, I've got a place to bug out let me go do drugs in the mountains and just be chill until this blows over no i'm not i'm not gonna do that that's not an your option wife might. um <laughs> <laughs> your, wife, your wife might take some peyote buttons no we, we one way or another we're gonna keep doing these live streams every day um you know until until we turn the corner i mean maybe maybe our response to flatten the curve is is hashtag turn the corner i don't know where this is going but this is a really important idea Burn the this what what this what this silly graphic here represents is is a really important concept to understand about what's going on right now and how we help people and lessen the suffering that is being induced by governments all over the world. So with uh, Shane Smith wants to know, do I bring my own psychedelics? Uh, Rainbow just oh. Are we? Oh, we have um, just to celebrate here. Thank you so much, David. I, we see. I when I roll, we have we have a professional joint roller on staff. Fortunately, supplies are kind of low. By the way, fun quirk of what's going on right now. A lot is shutting down in California, but not pot shops. Mm -mm, this is. I love this. It's considered a scent, and and and, 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 and it really is for people who have. 
Now, I, I smoke cannabis both recreationally and medically. Uh, but for people, I, I don't have like a critical medical need. If I don't get it, I'm not going to start shitting myself. Like, you know, some people we know who actually have, I won't name names, digestive issues that are alleviated uh, with, with marijuana treatment. But uh, we are down to hash. So this is a hash cigarette, not not a proper joint, but it is it is, it is a really a really beautiful little cone you've put together here, David. So on that note, we'll uh, we'll spark this up and let people say their goodbyes in the chat. Nothing else. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. Remember, stay cool, calm, and collected at all times, but especially when everyone else is failing to do the same. Peace and love, y'all.